Good afternoon, everyone. Very warm welcome to the How to Craft Network studio and to our second uh, Funky Tuesday of the month. Uh, my name is Sarah Gray, and I have the pleasure of uh, joining you in the studio twice a month with products of my brand, Funky Fossil. Um, and we just get the opportunity to have a bit of an explore and a play uh, and hopefully get some of you crafting along with me. So this will be the second time that we've looked at the collection. We're going to have a, a further look through today called Dream Big. Um, and so hopefully some of you already got it at home and will be able to, to have a little bit of a, a dabble with me. For those of you who haven't seen it or haven't had the chance to get a hold of it, then we will have a look at it. I will say some hellos and then hopefully give you some, two corking demos particularly using vellum today. So I thought, yeah, vellum's a nice, be a nice accent for this kind of collection, the Dream Big collection, because it's, it's kind of gives you that, that soft, elegant edge. So I want to have a little bit of a, a look at using vellum on our cards in my demos this afternoon. And I can see lots of you have tuned in. And I'm always so appreciative of the fact that you take the time on a Tuesday afternoon to come and see what a Funky Fossil are up to at How to Craft Network. Uh, let me say some hellos before I talk about the, the product that, uh, that we're going to look at. So I can see Laura, Denise, hello, lovely to see you, Denise, Amanda, Nola, Steph, Anita, Mary, Linda. Oh, there's lots of you on this afternoon. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a wet and miserable November, so definitely we need to get our, our crafting, um, crafting mojo on and enjoy being inside. Maureen, lovely to see you too. So yeah, lots of familiar names, but there may well be some of you that, that don't know me or haven't seen me here before. So as I say, um, hopefully this will be an introduction to you for Funky Fossil. Um, and the kind of stamps, dyes, papers that I bring, uh, I bring as collections quite often exclusive to How to Craft Network. I like to try and bring something once a month to you, um, which you can really enjoy and see for the first time. So let's have a quick look at what I've got in store for you today from a product's perspective. And we've got the full um, Shop the Show in the, uh, in the corner of the screen. So that gives you an overview of everything that we've got in, in the collection. And it's a gorgeous A5 stamp set called um, Dreamcatcher. And that's been illustrated for us by Charlotte Blackwood, who's one of our designers at Funky Fossil. So she's hand-drawn these beautiful, large Dreamcatchers with, the, with moths, uh, beautifully detailed moths on them. There's also an A6 stamp set that goes with the A5, so you've got those different scales of imagery. A stunning 6x6 paper pad, which uh, I know lots of you have been saying you absolutely love and probably are um, struggling to, to make do with only the one of them because they are, they are very strokeable. And I know Tony did a fab demo in the studio uh, the other day with them where she used three of the sheets of the same design to create a layered, uh, a layered card. So... There are three sheets of 12 designs in the paper pad. So if you like that kind of style of card that Tony made, it's definitely a paper pad that you'll enjoy using. There are two stencils in the overall collection. One comes with the paper pad, so it's the herringbone um, stencil and also some of our enamel dots, our gold, silver and clear enamel dots, which you know I, I love adding to lots of my uh, designs. And there's also a watercolour dream stencil as well, which um, gives you a nice kind of abstract background. And another hero product, I think, of this collection is the floating, floating Hearts dies. It's a pair of dies um, which give you that kind of lovely uh, kind of one is just straight hearts, one is circles and hearts, but almost bubbles. Or you can imagine these for Valentine's cards or any occasion. And in fact, I've done samples where it's the main focal point. They're quite a light, it's quite a large die main focal point or it can be then the back very much a background element as well so it's going to feature in one of the demos this afternoon so that is in its entirety the collection if you if you um put the whole show in your basket as the shop the show that's definitely the best price but there may be little um elements of the overall collection that particularly appeal to you so have a look through and um see if there's anything that that you can see working with your stash already so that's what we're going to have a, a look at. And I think I bought these. I think I bought this collection to the brand event on the 4th of the month. So I haven't been back in studio since the 4th. But certainly if you want to watch the brand event shows back, which of course you can do on YouTube, you'll see me do some demos with this collection already. Let's have a look at our first, um, 
I've just noticed that Karen says she used to make a cuppa because she's freezing, whereas I'm I'm too warm. I've just I've just had to, to, to turn the heat off in here, so um, I need a cold drink. Uh, so yeah, let me do my first demo for you. And the the card, and I think I've shared the cards that I'm going to um, focus on uh, in the Eureka Facebook group already. But this first card that I'm going to um, make in studio has got a vellum overlay over the uh, the kind of the base card. So I'm going to do some. I'm going to use. I'm going to use sprays in studio. I've already worn Tim. I think we're all going to need to kind of hose down everything once I've finished because I really struggle to use sprays without making an almighty mess. But I'm going to use sprays in the background, do some heat embossing, create this gorgeous overlay, um, which really will kind of gives, a, gives a, a bit of dimension to the cards and obviously one of the big dream characters, as you can see. So let's get the spray inks out the way first because that's the bit I'm, I'm, I'm thinking um, could, be, could be the messiest. And then we can, uh, we can enjoy putting the card together. And the sprays that I'm going to use um, are the pearly wink sprays, uh, uh, two of the pearly wink sprays. I'm not sure whether they're ones that um, we carry here at How to Craft Network, but you'll certainly be familiar with pearly winks if you've watched shows before here because they do, they do come on, um, on the channel as well. And they're two very strong colours. So I've got an intense pink and their intense diamond, which is called... Um, black currant purple and it really is that it's very rich dark purple and the intense diamond has a bit of mica in it so it's got a bit of shimmer built in i've created a little bit of a spray station uh, to try and catch the the worst of the spray from going onto the glass mat um hopefully tony's not in the building so we should have cleared up before before she gets back and what I tend to do when I'm making a spray background so that the inks blend together and don't dry immediately on contact with the paper is I give the, uh, I give the cardstock a quick spritz. This is watercolour cardstock and it's definitely worth trying your um, sprays on all different types of cards that you have in your stash because you will get very different effects. So um, some, some kind of seem to mute the colours, some drink the, the colour in straight away and others kind of allow it to float for a little while. And that's why I've gone with the watercolour paper. It's going to give me a bit of movement time. And I've added that water to keep it, keep it fluid. So let's start with the pink at the top. And I've got to commit to this spray. This has got to be, um, get really strong colour on here straight away. And then we'll go with the black. I've given the black currant diamond a bit of a, bit of a swirl so that we've got the mica moving around. And then we can go in at the bottom here. You see how strong that is. It's a really, really rich colour. Now, this may be way too uh, intense for, for what you want to do. I'm, I'm going to do some white heat embossing on this. So I quite like the strength of these colours. Um, but of course, the other way of getting most out of your inks and making sure nothing goes to waste is give another piece of card a bit of a spritz. And we can just take a print off this while it's still, still wet. And you'll be able to get then, really, with this amount of spray that I've got on here, you'll be able to get two, two backgrounds for the price of one. So I will, don't worry, I've got one that's dry already, so we don't, need to, we don't need to worry about waiting for this to dry. So you can see, almost without um, diluting the colour too much, we've got two fabulously rich backgrounds here. These pieces of card are bigger than what I'm going to use for the card base, so I don't worry about a bit of white around the edge because we're going to trim it down. But aren't they gorgeous? So yeah, if you, if you are uh, not averse to a little bit of, little bit of mess and, and inky hands for a day or two, then having rich colours in your sprays is, is fantastic. And they, they remind me actually of the Stumps by Me colours, the new colours that um, Tony bought to us with the magenta and the, um, the is it indigo or the violet? So yeah, they, they work really well with those, with those uh, ink pads. So I'm going to leave these to one side to have a little dry because I'll be able to use them on another project. But I think we all survived the sprays, didn't we? I think, I think, I, uh, <laughs> I, think I got away with that. And so here's the one that I had um, already sprayed. And you can see, I mean, a very similar effect. Can you see this drift of mica here? It's fabulous. You can see that real shimmer that the, uh, the black currant has. So, of course, if you don't have sprays with uh, mica in, then you could always use the, 
uh, I think it's the, the, uh, the pearl mist that Pearly Winds bring out, so that gives you that kind of mica sheen all over your project without needing to have it in the bottle. But this is now nice and dry, and I want to heat emboss it on it, so I didn't really want to take the risk of trying to dry in studio because we might not get them dry enough that the embossing powder wouldn't, wouldn't stick where we didn't want it. And another way of kind of doing this, this kind of embossed background would be um, if you, I'm sure you're familiar with, but that kind of emboss uh, resist. So you could, you could stamp and white heat emboss on your cardstock and then go over it with inks, blending brush and inks. And the, the, white will, the white of the heat embossing will still show through. So that's another way of getting a background like I'm going to show you here. But I did think that the strength of the sprays would give us a nice contrast. So I'm going to use the kind of... Um, mini mandala element from the i think it's from the dreamcatcher the a5 stamp set and as you've seen from the finished uh sample that i showed you at the beginning i'm going to have my main dreamcatcher in the middle there on vellum so i'm just going to be mindful of that in terms of where i place my stamp because i don't necessarily want the um base layer to bite with it too much if that makes sense so I'm going to just stamp a couple of these because this embossing ink will stay wet for long enough. But I can emboss them all at once. Are you liking those colours, are you? I'm not normally a purple person, but this black currant is very rich. And I was, I was inspired a little bit by the, the Midnight Garden papers that are part of this collection because that's got some good, lovely rich purples and pinks in it. So... I think that's why I gravitated towards these, these spray colours. So, just got stamping off the edge. You'll have seen me do many a time when I'm doing a background because I don't necessarily want it all to look like it's too neatly contained. You want it to look like it's part of something that was, was bigger to start with. And now, of course, the challenge is seeing where on earth I actually did the stamping. I'm breaking out a new uh, jar of white embossing powder for the occasion. You need to look at how nice and vibrant already without it melting, without it being uh, heat set, that white looks against the, the colours. Now let me, let me add from the A6 stamp set, it's got another lovely kind of background builder element to it. So always look at your stamp sets and look and see what else there is. Obviously, our eye is normally drawn to the kind of main focal point, isn't it? And that's the, that's the thing that gives us that immediate connection. But more often than not, there are some lovely supporting elements in our stamp sets that are perfect for creating those kind of coordinating backgrounds. And the A6 has got this lovely feather with the beads. And while, while the powder's still on the other, the kind of mandala elements, we can just get these stamped out quickly, just tessellating it, moving it around so it's not all too static, sticking to the edges more than not. Oh, it's lovely to see lots of you joining us. Hi, Julie. Hi, Melanie as well. Anyone else I've missed? Right. I know I stumped it three times. <laughs> like a memory game. Oh, there it is. And there you go. I'm just give this a quick heat set now. And these images will really start to pop off the, uh, the spray background. You've just finished crafting, Carol Ann. Should be just starting. You should be crafting along with me. Oh, hi, Ali, as well. It's lovely to see you. Hope you're feeling better. Right. 
let the bun just warm up slightly. Look at that. It just really is just such a strong pink, isn't it? So yeah, if you do I have sometimes heat embossed images and then sprayed over the top because again you can block the spray from where the image is. So you do it in whatever order works best for you. And certainly if you do make anything using the Dream Big collection or techniques that we share in the studio this afternoon, I always really love to see what you're doing. Because I'm more often than not, I get some inspiration from what you're doing as well. So that's our background. You can see I've left that central space relatively clear because we're going to do our heat embossing on the vellum now to create an overlay. And fortunately, that background hasn't curled up too much with the, um, with the heat embossing. So all is good. So I've got my Eureka here because obviously this uh, large dream catcher is a more detailed image and we're going on to the vellum. So I want to ensure that I get it didn't matter with the background whether the stamping was perfect because we're going to be effectively masking it to a degree with the overlay. But this is very much the focal point. So I do want to ensure I get a nice, good impression of that. And these are big, these are big stamps in the A5 stamp set. They really, they really do hold their own. And I think we've been seeing lots of... Um, Fab samples from the design team and from Karen as well on the group. So hopefully you've seen lots of other inspiration with them. I just have got how on earth have I got spray? Which side is that on? I've got spray on the um oh it's on it's that's all right, it's on the outside. I've got spray on the uh, Eureka. There we go. There's always some. That escapes. But I, just didn't, I didn't want to get it on my vellum. Right, let's push down and get this vellum embossed. <laughs> you keep blowing the powder off, Nola. So I'm just letting this really settle over the um, over the vellum. Give it plenty of connection time with the vellum. And that looks like we've got a nice, clear impression there. I don't, I don't know what it is about stamping, but I'm always slightly surprised when it works. <laughs> I don't know if you're the same, but I'm always like, oh, actually, that looks good. So let's put some white onto this. And I just think embossing on vellum is just such a, so elegant, isn't it? And you could, of course, emboss this in, in gold or any colours you want, really. I'm conscious of the, the, um, the strong colours behind this, so I want, I want to try and ensure I have maximum contrast. You can probably just make out the... Uh, the Embossing powder on that vellum. Of course, I do need to think about these things don't I? When, I, when I'm doing demos. White on white isn't always the most visible. <laughs> Making Tim's life job hard for, him, hard for him. So let's give this a blast now and see this dream catcher come to life. And one of the nice things about vellum is that the powder just turns virtually immediately because the heat can pass straight through. So you're not, you're not got to spend time heating the substrate. So if you are heat embossing onto cardstock or onto MDF even, 
Um, it can take that bit longer because you've obviously got the whole thing to heat up, whereas with vellum, it, it literally just takes the, takes the heat straight away. I'm conscious I've already got inky hands. Look at that. I thought I'd done so well. I was obviously feeling complacent far too early. So hopefully I'm not going to cover the vellum <laughs> in, my, in my pink pink spray. And can you see how when that it just uh, sits on top of the, um, the spray background, how um, pretty it looks, but it really, really tones down those colours. So you don't want, uh, if, you, if, if you're going to do something like this, you do really want quite strong colours in the background to give you that, that kind of um, impact. And of course, the, the, the um, more contact we enable that top layer to make with the background, then the stronger those colours get. So what I'm going to do, because the next challenge we always have with vellum is how do we attach it to our projects without then glue or other things kind of being visible. So I've deliberately kept my, um, this is a five by seven card front and I've kept the vellum longer than the actual card front itself. So I can, I can literally um, fold it at the top and at the bottom and attach it. Um, at the back, so it won't be visible. I did have some washi tape somewhere. But if I don't have any, then I will be using, I will be using glue. So let's just put a bit of wet glue, top and bottom. And of course, this is the back of the card. So having a glue showing isn't going to cause us any difficulties at all. And we've got that at the front. Actually, I don't know where, what I've done with my um, uh, washi tape, but I will talk you through what I've done on this sample card. This will be one of those things that I've, oh, I've got it. I've kept it, I've kept it to one side. So I've got some um, washi tape here, which is part of a, a new set of washi that we released last week. But I thought it was a nice, uh, it worked really nicely with the pinks uh, and the tones that we've got showing underneath. And so I'm going to put a little bit of washi tape down each side of this card panel mainly to ensure that I'm kind of giving that background as much opportunity to show through as possible. One thing you could do, and I know Karen does this a lot, is tear your vellum. Um, so you've got some of that card uh, background peeking out either side. So again, whatever works best for you. But you know I'm always trying to encourage you to use your, uh, use your washi tape. So this is another great way of doing it. And I'm literally going to tear this washi tape so we've got a nice torn edge. We don't need too much down each side. And it will just stop that kind of, the vellum from kind of um, standing too far proud of the, uh, the background. Of course, if you wanted to, this could actually be a, a bit of a, Bit of a shaker pocket. I know how much you all enjoy your shaker cards. So you could, obviously, you know, you could put something in here before you seal it and you could have a shaker element on the front of your card. Let me get another bit of uh, this washi. I know I'm wasting this washi on the side. There's 10 meters on the roll, so I think, I think we'll manage. And then we can trim it down. Let's say again, you've got it, you've got the uh, vellum already well and truly uh, adhered at the back. So this is more decorative than anything else. And you could dispense with this step uh, altogether or um, you could use the, the, the washi purely for decoration and, just, and, and not use it to seal. But I thought it gave me an extra little bit of, um, of security for getting that vellum close to the close to the background. Karen's the queen of washi. <laughs> she is. She does use it on a lot of cards. 
So let's just trim off this. Trim off the uh, tails of washi at the top and bottom. And how quick is that? I mean, obviously, I've, I've not allowed drying time here because um, my, uh, my inky panel is still drying. Um, you could obviously heat set it, but it's a really quick card to make. And I think, and it, and I think it's a really kind of unusual uh, style just to have that, the two layers on top of each other. So let's adhere this to our card front with a little bit of the old glue. I'm ignoring you laughing at my reference to a shaker card, Karen. Oh, thanks, Denise. It is all, they're all techniques that I've learned or seen other people do. I can't claim to be the originator of any of them, but it's incorporating them, isn't it? It's you combining them to create things which reflect your style. So. There we go. So all I'm going to do now um, is uh, add, a well, add a sentiment and add the butterfly. I'm just, I forgot the main focal point here. Um, so, of course, we could leave it like that. And I think it's really nice. It's very elegant to have that, everything all in white. But what I have done already is um, stamped out and uh, white heat emboss the butterfly from this dream catcher on the overspray. So, you know, when I was saying to you about um, doing two Two, um, two prints from the same spray, then of course, if you do that, you've got both your background and also a completely matching um, piece of cardstock where you can do, where you can stamp and um, get, your, get your kind of focal point out of. So that will mean that the intensity of the colors behind the vellum are kind of still, still visible in our, in our layered butterfly. And I think, I, or moth, I think I said this in the brand event, but one of the lovely things about these illustrations from Charlotte is she has kept the moths as full images. So you'll see lots of samples which are just of the moths or the butterflies um, because they were good size. So, you know, you've got there both the flexibility, the versatility of using the dream catchers or just using the, the, the insects themselves. And I love that. I love that with the, the hint of purple just coming through. And then we've got a sentiment from, um, this is from the A6 stamp set, I believe, uh, where Dream Big. Uh, and I, again, I've just used more of that overspray that um, I, uh, I created with my first, when I made my first background. And I've got that white heat embossed on the purple part of that. And let's put a little bit more of the washi behind this. Again, just bring in all those pinks and purples together yeah if we put that down here and adhere our sentiment then we've, we've got those pinks and purples showing through all the way and do you know what i'm going to do i'm going to put some enamel dots on it because how often do i forget to do that however uh, on the one that I made earlier, I did put clear enamel dots. I don't know if you can see that. You, you can maybe just about make them up. So I'll put some gold ones on just so that you can, you'll believe me when I say I've added some. Or should I put, actually, I'll put silver. I'll put silver on because that'll go nicely with these, this colourway. And again, just a lovely finishing touch. And when you've got so many enamel dots on the sheet, you don't need to be too sparing with them. And there we go. Put one more down here. And um, one of the ways I place the, the embellishments like this, it could be sequins, it could be whatever it is that you're attaching to your card, is I'm trying to create a line. It's another, for, it's another line for the, um, the eye to follow. So however, whatever the orientation of your design is, when you're putting these kind of embellishments on, just have a think about how you cluster them and to what extent they are 
um, enhancing the focal point. So there is the one that I made um, and put on a Facebook group. And here's the one that I've just done in studio. And I think, again, just showing how easy it is to create that I've been able to, to re replicate that same card really quickly. The only thing I've done differently on the original one is I used some of the graphite confetti ink just to uh, color the body of the, the moth to give it a bit of contrast. But beyond that, they're pretty much the same. And I think looking rather smart. So that is vellum over the top of our card as a, a way of using it. And I've got another demo. Um, we'll just have a quick look through the collection, but I've got another demo which is about using vellum as the underlay on our card. So, you yeah, know, when I get a theme going, I kind of stick with it. So here we've got on the counter is the, um, the fabulous collection that um, you've been seeing me talk about and use now over the course of the month. Um, the Midnight Garden papers. Actually, should I just do a quick um, pick and flick of those so you can have a look and see how lush the patterns are? And I'll just um, because they are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. They're, they're rich navies and um, black backgrounds with, with kind of watercolor style florals, but also um, strong geometric patterns as well. Really unusual and kind of gold splatters on them. Just, uh, I say, I, I have, um, there's been no end to the way I've, I've thought of using these. Um, and this is, this is the, the paper that um, I know Tony used in studio where she kind of fussy cut around several layers of this and layered them up to do a bit of a kind of um, uh, almost a coupage uh, card front. So you've got a card front ready made. Beautiful navies, navy colours. So yeah, complementing um, each other. Here's some um, of the, the black backgrounds with the striking reds, chevrons, black and white stripes. They are really usable papers. I love that stripe one with the gold splatter. I've done a demo with that one. And this is another one where I've cut out the border at the top. And of course, you could, given you've got three sheets fit, you could cut out a border um, a couple of times and have it on either side of your card front. So, I say, really, really lovely papers. And I know several of you have um, been investing in more than one of those, so you can use them on lots of different projects. So that's in the whole shop, the show, but if you wanted to get it as an individual item, it also comes with a stencil and some enamel dots. And then the rest of the bundle is, as, as we've just um, seen uh, from the demos that I did, the two stamp sets, there's the A5 and there's the A6, uh, and you can buy those separately or as part of the overall bundle. And we've got the gorgeous floating heart dies, which I'm about to use in my next demo. So let me get that out. We can have a look at how, how these um, heart dies can work alongside the imagery and the papers. I've got the, this is a, a demo. This is going to be quite a quick demo because uh, I've already done um, the die cutting ahead of time. Uh, I really just wanted to, to share with you my idea of how, of how I've put this card together. So this is the card that I shared on, um, it doesn't come with a die. Um, this is the card that, uh, which way should I go overhead? <laughs> this is the card that um, I shared on the uh, Eureka group in advance. And it's a similar one to a sample I'd already made. So you can just see it in different kind of color combinations, different um, papers from the pad. And what I've effectively done is uh, cut the floating heart dies out of the middle of the paper, uh, out the middle of the paper panel and then um, inlaid that die again. But the thing that I think makes this a particularly attractive card is the fact that then I've got vellum behind the die and we've got a little bit of stamping peeking through those little window we've got and of course we've got the moths from the stamp sets as well so let me show you how I've put that together as another way of um, using the uh, using these gorgeous dyes and papers hi Simon how's day two going I'm excited to hear about your first day in the new job yesterday It is, a, it is a lush paper pad, I have to say. And I think why I wanted to show you those two samples side by side is you probably choose 
most, most if not all of the papers from this pad and do this exact design with them. But I've gone with, I've gone with the, the paper that I, that I used in my, in my sample, uh, this rich navy with the florals in. You can see I've already cut out um, the floating hearts die. And it makes an absolutely stunning, just in its own right, out of that patterned paper, just the little hints of florals and different colours in it, makes an absolutely stunning focal point in its own right. So um, I can set that aside and use that for another project. Because what I want to do with this one is, uh, is use a gold one and lay it with the gold so it pops and it, should, it gives me a good contrast uh, with the dark, the rich papers. So let me put some vellum behind my aperture so we can put our dye back in. Oh, hi, Cathy. Lovely to see you as well. Again, and what I'm doing here is trying to kind of put the glue kind of around where the aperture is because we want we don't want the ink, uh, the, ink, the glue squidging in to the apertures, but equally we do want the vellum to be adhered well at the point where it connects with the, the window. And of course, this could be a, a shaker card as well, if you feel like making one. That's not what I'm going to do today. But there we go. So I've got that adhered at the back. And we can put our, and I, I just love doing this with dyes. I love um, taking them out of the card and then putting them back in. And um, I'll, I'll tell you with this one, um, I'd run out of pearlescent gold card when I was putting this together. So I've made my gold card for this, uh, for this project using, um, what did I use? I used uh, the confetti, uh, confetti inks and, um, I just use a yellow ink pad and then I put the confetti ink over the top to give me that really rich, luscious gold. So if ever you run out of a metallic cardstock, get those confettis out because they do a fab job. But I, want, I had to put, the, I had to, but I chose to put some colour down on the card before I put the confetti over it. You'd get a different type of gold, obviously if you went directly onto the paper with the, um, with the confetti ink, but it's, it's given a really gorgeous, gorgeous sheen. I'm just nudging that die back into place. And you can see that. Now, I could have, and I did think about this, I could have um, put this then over another, uh, another pattern paper. So a bit like we just did with the, um, with the vellum overlay, I could have had that pattern peeking through but I thought that might be a little bit too much with those patterns kind of competing with each other so all I have done is I've used one of our a7 stamps I know we've had it on this on the channel before but it may not be available now but you I'm sure will have something very similar already which is an a7 uh, script stamp so this is just a nice fine script that as you can see I've randomly uh, stamped and gold heat embossed onto a piece of white card because all I want is just that suggestion of script appearing behind our apertures. Uh, at, yeah, the apertures of the... And can you see that? It's, just, it's a really subtle touch, but it's one of those things where if somebody receives the card, it will, it will cause them to look, look more closely. So before, actually, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere the, this directly to the, um, to the front layer, because again, if we have... If we have too much distance, then you really won't see, certainly with this vellum anyway, you won't see the script. So I do want to adhere them together. And again, kind of sticking around where that focal point is. So this is one of those um, designs where it doesn't matter again if your stamping is perfect, not perfect, because it really is going to be just a suggestion. And that's, we've got that there. And then I've, because I was being very frugal with my homemade gold uh, card, I've got some strips here to give us the look of a matte layer. But if you've got plenty of it and you just want to put a, a full scale matte 
uh, behind this uh, this focal panel, then uh, then that would be perfectly fine. And I typically do that. I'm I'm quite I'm quite gung ho. That's probably why I've run out of it. I'm quite uh, generous with the with my card stock. So this and of course what I'm trying to do here with this uh, element of having the kind of the the look of the mat is bringing that gold in, just tying those those bits together. Yes, acetate's a good one to go with as well, Caroline. Particularly if you want in to kind of give yourself um, more visibility, and obviously there was that gorgeous acetate um, on the weekend, or wasn't there? A really kind of strong, clear acetate. So I just so I, it set my mind racing on all the things you could do there with kind of die cuts and um, creating those kind of more dimensional cards. Andrew, you say you're watching in Spain. Just, I'm very, very jealous. I'm hoping you're getting some sunshine there. So, I'll let this just dry before I trim it off. Oh. Sorry, I was I was reading the comments there. I was, forgot that I was meant to be trimming the gold. There we go. Easily done. So this is going to give us that lovely, dare I say, elegant panel on the front of our card. You can see how quick is that? coming together um so yeah these pattern papers really do a lot of the work for you now let me stick this down and um i've already uh stamped and um colored uh, one of the moths from the dream catchers so we've got that ready to go and you'll have seen me um in the brand event, uh, I've, I've used the same technique here, is I've mixed my uh, confetti, I think the gold confetti, with, um, with the new Stamps by Me inks to give me that kind of shimmery watercolour look. So uh, again, you can watch that show back from the fourth just to see how I've kind of got that coloured effect. I just didn't think you'd want to see me heat emboss something else today. <laughs> so that's a lovely panel on the front of our card. You could have popped that up on foam tape. Uh, if that was um, if that was going to kind of uh, give you a bit more bit more oomph, and then in my um, I think the first one of these that I did, um, I had the um, the the moth kind of coming in from the right, but this time I thought I'd have it towards that top corner and it almost looked like the, the the hearts were a bit of a trail that it was leaving behind. Oh, thank you. Let's just put that. The only question in my mind with this one is um, this particular kind of moth is I've used colours which are very complementary to the paper pad, which I think looks fantastic. But equally, it does mean, and I should kind of lift the wings to give it a little bit of separation, it does mean it kind of merges in a little bit and i think that's why from memory i added a vellum layer on um on the original one just to kind of soften the colors so that it, the moth stood out a bit so again just think about what you would what what look you would want to go for and that is where have, where have i put my there we go i'm going to add some gold enamel dots now because I think they work really beautifully with this kind of this trail of hearts because you've got the circles that you can put your dots in. I just think these are, are the kind of ideal embellishments for cards. Just, no, I'm going to have four. 
And there we go. So again, just as I said with the last card where we had the kind of the, the dots moving through the design at an angle, this time we've got everything kind of going across this diagonal here. And that, although really quick and a really quick demo, I mean, it does look, I think the die makes it really um, possible to create kind of designs that, that look as if you've taken a lot of time putting them together. And this, I will certainly be using this cut out from that paper. Um, puts, all, all I'll do is put some splatters and a sentiment and you've got a card ready to go. So that is our second demo with the Dream Big Collection. I'm, I'm racing through it today. So here's that first and second version. Um, so I think they look really identical and uh, that paper just, just looks expensive, doesn't it, really, with that, with that gold as well. Um, and you can see, I uh, can't really tell the difference um, between the um, between the kind of the, my confetti ink gold and my gold cardstock. They, they look pretty identical. And then you've got that fruit peeking out from behind the, um, from behind the apertures. So they are the cards that I was wanting to share with you in studio today and hopefully kind of give you some ideas and inspiration to get that vellum out and use it or the acetate, as Caroline was suggesting. Um, I think these designs, the, the dream catchers, are a perfect um, set of designs to use with that kind of golds, uh, whites, heat embossing, just that airy uh, and, and kind of dreamy effect that I think will work really well with this collection. So I really hope that you do like the Dream Big Collection and thank you already to everybody that's purchased it. I know it's been one of our most popular collections here on How to Craft Network and it has been exclusive to How to Craft Network. So um, you saw it at the beginning of the month and this is our second view of it. And I think I'm going to leave you there. Um, I'll be back in December because it's only another week away, isn't it, already? Uh, and I'll certainly be popping into the studio with more... Um, with more demos and more products um, to share with you. And in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and uh, continue to do some crafting in this cold November weather. I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for now. Bye.